morning. We thank you that you have brought us together to sing praise and worship. And Lord, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus like he would want us to. And Father, we give you praise. We, we thank you that we can join together and focus upon you. Lord Jesus, anoint this service and pour out your spirit upon us. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and greet each other in the name of Jesus. We bring the sacrifice of praise is the greeting song. As soon as you get through greeting, start singing with us, all right? your hymnal if you want to use a hymnal to hymn number 600 words will be on the screen too when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there going to do a number that comes from the Apostles' Creed. Someone took this and placed this to music, and, and part of the Apostles' Creed is in this. It's called Because We Believe. And Rick Pitt is going to be our guest director for the choir on this song as we sing this together. Y'all ready? All right. Father, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Christ 
Would you stand with me? Hymn number 143. This is our offertory hymn. You are my all in all. The words will be on the screen as well. You can use your hymn as well. Number 143. to step on it real hard, but it'll work. Okay. Jesus, 
hour we can come together and worship you. And Father, we just lift your name up today. Father, we just pray that for the movement of your spirit in the midst of this house. And Father, as we worship you in our giving, we just pray that each one will give with thankful hearts. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. hard week. I don't know about anybody else, but it, I was out of town all week, and I know it was hard on me, and it was hard on my family, um, but um, in the end of it, you know, we're all alive, and that's awesome. <laughs> my children stayed alive. My husband stayed alive, <laughs> and I passed all my tests this week, so I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, but some of the things that I thought about this week was definitely Mr. Shirley and his family. I just talked to him. Hello? Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I loved him very much. My, my family loved him and my children loved him. I know this whole church loved him. Um, but this is a song about how the Lord is amazing to all of us. So.
is your love for me. morning, I'm going to be preaching a message entitled The Kingdom of God. And we're going to be looking in Luke's gospel and we're going to be glancing at two small verses. But let's go into the Lord in prayer as we begin to the time of the proclamation of God's word. Let us pray. Uh, Father in heaven, we're thankful for who you are and for all that you do in our lives. Father, we're thankful for the marvelous opportunity to be able to be called the children of the living God. And we're also mindful and we're thankful, Father, that you've given us the opportunity and the right as the children of God to be a part of the kingdom of God. And Father, we're just so thankful for that. Father, I pray now that you'll take these few moments that we have during the time of the proclamation of your holy word. And as our hearts have been stirred already, Father, through singing and uplifting our voices, May you just honor your word and may it speak to our hearts and to our lives that we can go from here today being encouraged through your word as it's made applicable to our lives. I surrender this message unto you. May you use it to bring honor and praise to yourself to help to edify your people. And may you hide me behind the cross of Calvary for it's in Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, turn with me to the 17th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. We're found this morning in the Gospel of Luke, and we're going to be reading two short verses or two verses. It's not a lengthy passage this morning, but Jesus was addressing some of the Pharisees as they came uh, encountering the whole concept of the kingdom of God. So let's look here in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, uh, beginning in, we're going to pick up in verse 20. And it says this, it says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, and he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall ye say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Now, that's two short verses, but let me begin by saying this. When you start looking, particularly with an understanding of what would be known as the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke in particular, you hear these two terms mentioned frequently. You will hear what is called the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And what we've got to remember is that the kingdom of heaven is up there, okay? It's where God is. It's, it's an upward aspect of the ruling aspect of God himself. But when you hear the term the kingdom of God, it is his ruling, reigning presence in the earth. And when you think about that, always remember the kingdom of heaven is up there. The kingdom of God is here. And a lot of times what we need to realize in our own lives is this. The kingdom of God can be seen in different ways. And we can be involved in different areas of the kingdom of God. Do you know that when you think about that, I want you just to ponder upon this. Somebody can be involved in a certain ministry over here. Somebody else may be involved in a certain ministry over here and somebody else even over here. But we've got to remember God's ruling, reigning presence 
in different areas of ministry make up the kingdom of God. And what we have to be very careful about is this. Just because you are involved in a certain area of kingdom work doesn't mean that your area is superior to somebody else's. So what we have got to realize is this. When we think of the kingdom of God, it's his ruling, reigning presence that encompasses all of God's ministries that you and I have an opportunity to be involved in. That's the kingdom of God. His ruling, reigning presence, God's activity. That's what it's really about. When we think about that, remember this also, that throughout Christ's early earthly ministry, particularly the last three years of his life, he constantly was preaching about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, such as this is the kingdom of God. He perpetually used that term, the kingdom of God. But there was a problem that came particularly amongst the Pharisees and some of the religious groups and leaders. A lot of times when Jesus would use that phrase, they were looking for a physical deliverer. When he's talked about the kingdom of God, they were looking for a political or a military leader at a particular level. So a lot of times when they heard that, they would even question Jesus when he would verbally mention the concept of the kingdom of God. In our text that we've read this morning, remember this, who was he talking to? He was talking to the Pharisees. And they were possibly trying to figure out what the plan was. Because listen to what it says in the first part of, of verse 20. It says this. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, let me ask you a question. You don't need to demand anything from Jesus. He is the Lord of lords, the king of kings. And I got, I'm going to be honest with everybody. You ready? He can answer whatever he wants to answer. You know, I mean, for you to come up and to tell the king of glory that I demand an answer for this, he may say, and you just melt. <laughs> Amen? So they, they were wanting to check this situation out because they were wanting to know what his plans were because if it was going to be a political or a military move, they wanted to make sure that they were involved in it, buddy. So when you think about that and you ponder upon it, think about what it was said. But they did not understand that Jesus was talking about a completely different kingdom. And they did not see it through the eyes of Jesus. Notice again these words, the kingdom of God, he says here, cometh not with observation. That was his response to their demanding request. Here's something else that's really good. When Jesus responds with the concept of an observation, when he says that in the Greek, that's basically meaning this. Watch this. It means this. The use, it's used in the medical field for close watch of symptoms. Now, I want you to think about that. In the medical field, it's used for a close watch of symptoms. So what they were saying was, we just want you to know something here, buddy. We want to have a close observation of what you're talking about, the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something. Listen to me very carefully, and we'll get into the message here really in a little bit. Pretty lengthy introduction, but let me share this with you. It's only when you understand who he is and see through the eyes of Jesus that you have the observation to see the kingdom of God. Think about that. That's very, very important for us to understand. See, their observation was on a physical realm, and they missed it completely. They missed it completely. And sometimes there are particular hindrances to seeing the kingdom of God. I really believe that. There are particular hindrances, and we're going to glance at that in a little bit. There are particular hindrances that keep people from seeing the kingdom of God. I'll share with you something that, happened just this uh, last Sunday that was really moving, I believe, and encouraging to us. Uh, we, we had the Glorylanders here Sunday night, Southern Gospel Group. 
they're kind of southern gospel, but they've got, they're the southern gospel group that can do the southern gospel, a little bit of what we might call the old gospel, but yet a little bit of some blended service as well. And we really enjoyed them Sunday night. Now, I want to edify the church today. I want you to get this. I want you, I want to edify the church. This is not for me. This is for the church. We had a senior couple that came in that night that go and attend another one of our churches in this area. They came and they were sitting in this service. Godly people who know the Lord, who walk with God. And as the service began, he was sitting next to his wife. And he said, did you feel that? <laughs> he looked over at her and he just poked her. He said, look, did you feel that? She said, I sure did. He said, God is here. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. He said, God is here. Did you feel that? Let me tell you something. I didn't know that until later. We were over in the fellowship hall and we were eating. And there was about eight of us around the table. Elbow to elbow, chicken flying everywhere. But anyway, okay. I know I took care of I, them, them poor chickens were gone, the ones that I had, the pieces. But we had, we had a great fellowship meal going on. And as we were talking, he just walks up to our table out of the blue. And he begins to get a little emotional. And he says, I just want to tell y'all something. And he backs up a few steps and he tells the story I just told you. He said, well, my wife and I showed up here tonight and we begin to start singing. Y'all begin to start singing. The group begin to start singing. He said, man, I felt the Holy Spirit come all over me. He said, God, let me know I'm here, okay? And he said, I punched my wife and said, did you feel that, sweetheart? She said, I sure did. I want you to know something. This house is open for the spirit of the living God. God, just come. You're welcome here. Amen. You're welcome. We thank you for what you're wanting to do and what you're going to do. Amen. He's here. And I praise him for that. He feels welcomed. That's good. When we think about that and we ponder upon that, it's important that we realize that that means that the kingdom of God wants to take place here. Amen. So important we understand that. This morning... Having said what I've said, let me say this, I believe, to bring also some more words of affirmation to our lives. I want us to notice, I believe, some hindrances and also some assets to witnessing the kingdom of God. I want us to notice some things this morning I believe is vitally important for us to understand and to make applicable in our lives. One of the first things that I believe that's important when we start thinking about the kingdom of God, it's simply this, and it's a simple question. How much does religious influence limit us from seeing and experiencing the kingdom of God? And what do you mean by that, Brother Steve? I simply mean this. How much of religious influence or religiosity would keep you and keep me from experiencing the kingdom of God and its work in our lives? Many a times that happens. See, what we've got to realize is this. I want you to notice that we can see that in our text. It's right there in our text. It was true for the Pharisees. Why? Because they were so hung up on religious move, the religious movement and their tradition that it limited them from seeing and participating in the kingdom of God. Listen to me carefully. Religiosity... I didn't say holiness or godliness. I said religiosity. Big difference. Religiosity and tradition can limit us from experiencing the reality of the kingdom of God in our lives and in his church. So when we begin to ponder upon that, remember this. The kingdom of God was right there before these Pharisees' eyes, and they missed it. 
Let me share something with you. <laughs> the train is passing by. Get on board, brother. Amen? Amen. Get on board. The kingdom of God is here. Just jump on board. Let me tell you something. You jump on board with God, he'll take you places you've never been before. He'll take you places you've never been before if you're willing to come on board with him. His kingdom is the ruling, reigning presence, and he wants us to be a part of it. But let me ask you another question. Are you looking, though, for the hand of God? Are you looking for his hand? And if not, we can miss out on the kingdom of God and what he's trying and so much is wanting to do in our lives and in the life of the church. And I just want to tell you, I just thank God for a fresh breath up on the life of Caney Fort Baptist Church. I just praise God for that. God's got a destiny. God's got a future for Caney Fort Baptist Church. And I just, I just want to praise him for that. See, we see an example of those not looking for the movement of God. We see an example of that in the, in the gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 15. Turn there with me if you'd like to. Matthew chapter 15. And here again, uh, a lot of times he was referring to those who had religiosity but lacking from the reality of the movement of the Holy Spirit in their lives and seeing the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 15, we pick up in verse 10 and listen to the words of Jesus. And he called the multitude and he said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Now, why did he say that for? Because of the Pharisees and their controlling influence over the people of rituals that came out of the Old Testament. And what they were trying to do, they were trying to legalize people under the bondage, which the book of Galatians later dealt with that in face of, in face of Gnosticism in the first century. So when he makes a statement, he makes that statement. Then it says, Then came his disciples and said unto, the, un, unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Can I share something with you? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> this is not in my notes. Jesus even offended the Pharisees. Truth will always offend the unrighteous. The question is whether or not we're willing to accept the truth. I got news for you. Listen to me carefully. Do you know that the truth offends me sometimes? Well, preacher, you mean the truth offends you? Yeah, because you know why? Because I'm not always right. Just ask my wife and she'll agree with that, okay? I'm not always right. But you remember this. Are you ready? Truth is always right. Truth is. So even Jesus offended the Pharisees, by what he simply said. But now watch how he answers. But he answers and he said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both of them shall fall into a ditch. So what he was simply telling them was this. He was saying, look, they can't see the kingdom of God. They don't understand the kingdom of God. And they're blindly leading each other into a ditch. Let me ask you a question. This is important. Do you want to live out 
the kingdom of God in your life? I do, don't you? That's what I want. That's my desire to do that. I pray that we'll be willing to let his word and the Holy Spirit that lives within us to prevail as dictor in our lives. And when we do that, we will be able to experience more of the reality of the kingdom of God in our lives. What's the application? Are we looking for the hand of God at work? And if you're looking for the hand of God at work, you'll be able to experience the kingdom of God in your life. You'll be able to do that. Something else I want us to notice that's very important when it comes to the whole concept of the kingdom of God and you and me being able to participate in it. It's simply this question. How much does the world's view or God's view impact our view witnessing the kingdom of God? How much does the world's view and God's view have an impact upon our lives as far as us being able to witness or to participate in the kingdom of God. That's very important. You say, well, Brother Steve, what do you mean by that when you say that? Well, remember this, what Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 says. It says this, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So that's where he's at. That's where you're at. That's where I'm at, as we think in our hearts. And remember this, as we think in our heart, where is that heart located? Where is that heart focused upon? And we go back to that question, how much does the world's view or God's word have an impact upon our lives as far as us being able to see the kingdom of God? And listen to me carefully. <laughs> oh, man, this is good. How much can you see the kingdom of God if you're lent toward the world? If you're leaning to the world and you're not letting the world, you're letting the world influence you more than the word of God, my friends, you're going to be limited and handicapped on seeing the movement and the kingdom of God. So, so true for us to understand in our own personal lives. And when we ponder upon that and when we think about that, and we reflect upon that, here's another question. As we look at the world, who is influencing our views? I got a, that's a big question to ask. Who's influencing your view and your opinion of things? Is it the world or is it God's word? And here's something we've got to understand. If it's the world that's influencing our view, how in the world can you see the kingdom of God and its work and its activity? You can't. The way to help see the kingdom of God and God at work is through his holy word and the Holy Spirit that lives within us. Helps us to see the kingdom of God is important. Here's another question to ask in regard to this. <laughs> How can you involve yourself in the kingdom of God if the word of God doesn't influence you? Think about that. How can you and I be involved in the kingdom of God if the word of God doesn't influence us? That can't happen. You're going to be very limited on your involvement in the kingdom of God. And when I think about that and I ponder upon that, I think of a great, great passage of Scripture that we find in 2 Timothy as the Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy. And he says these words, listen, listen to these words. This relates to the Word of God being made applicable in our lives over the world's view that we might experience the kingdom of God. And listen to these words. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for what you teach. And reproof, man, don't go there these days. Reproof, do you know what reproof means? When you were about eight years old and daddy got a hold of something on your backside that connected to your brain. 
That's what it means. Reproof means rebuking. The Word of God is there to rebuke certain things. And so what he's telling us here, he said, is profitable for teaching or for doctrine, for, re for reproof, which means rebuke, also for correction and for instructions in the guidance of righteousness. For what reason? And he gives us the reason. I love what he says. He says that the man of God might be complete or perfect. That, that's the whole reason. And you are thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Wow. So when you and I think about that, remember this. The word of God and the moving of God's spirit within us helps us to see God's activity. Listen to me carefully. Sometimes we can't see God's activity because of two reasons. First of all, we're no longer sensitive to the, whole, to the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And second of all, God's Word has no prevalent interest in our lives. And when, we, when that happens, we lose out on God's activity. And we miss seeing the kingdom of God and how that we can be involved in what God is doing. That can happen. Thirdly, let me, let me say this. This is something else. Watch this. How much does our desire to please oneself versus our involvement in the kingdom of God? Which means this, watch this. How much of an influence does what pleases me over that of being involved in the kingdom of God? Listen to me carefully. A lot of times you and I will miss out on God's things because we're too hung up in the world's things. And that can be a hindrance and keep us from being able to be what God would have us to be. And we'll miss out on his ruling, reigning presence and his desire in areas of our lives that are so, so important. Does you and I, or do you and I, does one's own selfish nature limit one from seeing and being involved in the kingdom of God? That's a question to ask. Does our own selfish nature keep us? I've seen people that God could use in an amazing way if they would just simply say, Lord, I'm tired of living like this. I want to live for you. I want to make you the Lord of my life. And I choose to walk in your ways, and I'm going to set sail on living a godly life. And I'm going to tell you something, friends. There are people literally that are gifted in amazing ways that God could use, but they miss it. They just completely miss it. Instead of living to God's full potential for them, they're somewhere back there at about 20 to 30 percent. Wow. That can happen sometimes. Here's something else. This is another question. <laughs> Can we see beyond ourselves? Because, see, that directly involves our involvement in the kingdom of God. How in the world can God use us in the kingdom of God if we can't see past ourselves? That's important. Sometimes this is hard to do. But I got news for you. If you can look past yourself, if I can look past myself and to see what God's desiring to do, what God's wanting to do, and get involved in his kingdom's work, I want to tell you something. It will be rewarding in the end. It is definitely rewarding. Are you and I influenced to where you and I actually are limited in seeing the kingdom of God? his ruling, reigning presence through our worldly views and through pleasing oneself. Let me say something. We've got to realize what Brother Steve's talking about. Listen to me carefully. There's the kingdom of heaven is where? Up there. I've already, I'm going back to what I talked about from the very start. The kingdom of heaven is up there. 
The kingdom of God is where? Right here. His ruling, reigning presence. How much of our worldly views, worldly involvement, and pleasing oneself is keeping us from experiencing the kingdom of God here in our everyday life. Listen to me. This, this is important. Tie in to fellowship with him. Tie in to walking with God. And when you tie in to walking with him, he'll take you on a journey of a lifetime to where when you get a little bit older and you look over your shoulder, you can sing the song, All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? All through life he's been, what? Yeah, he's been there. It's great to know that. Fourthly and quickly, let me say this. How much does sin, though, limit us from seeing the kingdom of God? How much does sin keep us from seeing the kingdom of God? How much does it limit us from seeing the kingdom of God? Remember, the kingdom of God is here. I'm not talking about up there. Here. How much does sin keep us from just saying, you know, God's doing something over here? Let me tell you something. If we're so hung up in the world, we can never see truly the kingdom of God at work. We can't. So we got to ask ourselves that question. How much are we, you and I limited from just seeing what God's doing? Are we limiting ourselves? To being able to see the kingdom of God and seeing what, he's, what is his activity and seeing what he's doing. Let me ask you a question. What's got you in bondage keeping you from experiencing the ruling, reigning presence of God in your life? What's keeping you in bondage from that? God wants to move. God wants to lead. God wants to prevail in your life. He wants you to find purpose in your life. He wants you to experience him. I, now some of you are probably saying, well, Steve, you're talking about something that preachers get involved in, something like that. No, I'm talking about this. It's good as a lay woman, as a layman, to get up in the morning and say, you know what? I talked with God this morning. Amen. And he walks with me through life's journey. That's what I'm talking about. And when that happens, you will not miss out on the kingdom of God. Are you missing out on your Christian life, actually? Are you non-sensitive to his presence around you and within you? Are you willing to say, though, these words? Are you willing to say, God I want you to be more than a label I wear, but a person I encounter. That's it. God, I want it to be more than a label that I wear or a church that I go to. God, what I want more than anything is to be able to say, I met with God today. It's like old Dr. S.M. Lockridge at Union University. Uh, when he spoke, he came and he spoke and he said they came up in the 60s with the claim that God was dead. He said the offbeat theologians immersed from their playpens with God is dead. He said, I got two questions I want to ask them. He said, the first question I want to ask him is this. Why wasn't I a notified because I'm a member of the family? Amen. <laughs> hey, that's good. And he said, second of all, he said, I want to see his death certificate. <laughs> Amen. Let me tell you something. God's not dead. God is alive. And he wants us to encounter him. And when we're able to walk with him and to encounter him, we will experience the kingdom of God in our lives. Paul, as he was writing to the church at Philippi, he said these words, and these are, I love these words. He says that I may know him. 
and the power of his resurrection being made conformable unto his death. Let me tell you something, folks. God wants us to know him. And I want to tell you something. The greatest journey in all of life is to be able to say, you know, I can see the hand of God in my life through life's journey. And me being a Christian is not just a name, but me being a Christian is an experience. That's a whole different ball game. Are you willing to experience his powerful kingdom in your life? God so desires. Life will be seen from a whole different perspective if we'll let him be the Lord of our lives and we'll live out his divine destiny for us. We'll get to experience the kingdom of God more than just words that we say, but a supernatural experience and a journey of a lifetime. That's the good thing about it. Will you bow your heads, please? With heads bowed and eyes closed this morning, what is God wanting to do in your life today? What is he wanting to do in your life? How has he been talking to you lately? What's he been saying to you lately? In what way do you need to respond to him today? You may be here this morning and you may not know Christ as your Savior. Jesus simply whispers and says, Come unto me. Let me have your life and I'll change your life and give you a new life. Just repent of, of all that you've done. Say, God, here I am. I just need you in my heart and in my life. I want to make you my Savior today. And you may be here and you may be saying, Brother Steve, I know Christ is my Savior, but I can't see the kingdom of God at work because I'm really not in the fellowship that I should be with God at this time. And I just, I just want to rededicate my life. I want to renew my life in Christ and let him have his way. And there might even be some this morning here that might say, you know, Brother Steve, I, I just want to come be a part of Caney Fort Baptist Church. My prayer is this, whatever God has spoken to you about, that you'll let him have his way. I'm going to ask you to please stand to your feet with your heads bowed and eyes closed as Brother Don leads us. Brother Don. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the power. You let him have his way as he leads you in his life. Mold me and make me. This is your time. After To step out. Just come and pray about something or make some decision that you need to make. And still you let him have his way. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Search me and try me. Master. Oh. 